In this video, I'm going to show you all about how to assemble the hood and add some add some bias binding to the edges of that for our quilted jacket. Let's get into it. <laughs> continue in my series on putting together a hooded this hooded vest but don't, don't this series that we're, that we're walking through will get you through any kind of quilted garment that you might want to be doing so the the first one the first video that I did here I give you lots of ideas for patterns that might work for your quilted garment experience and then we talked about how to mark things and quilt them and then we and then I showed you how to cut bias and to mark the hood and to sew, sew together the, in the seams and to finish off the insides really nicely. And this in this video we're gonna we're gonna assemble the hood. Um, so again, one of the there's there's a couple of, of hooded vest patterns out there. And if this if you're not using a hooded vest that pattern for your particular use then then you can of course go on to any of the other steps in the in the process and the playlist should be somewhere around here so you can catch all of those other videos and uh yeah so today we're gonna we're gonna put the put the hood together and then i'm going to show you how to add the bias around the insides of that uh, I'll see you in the next, I'll see you in the next clip. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew my seam for my hood. And I, again, I'm, I'm just using a three quarter, uh, not three quarters, good grief. A, I'm using a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm just gonna yeah, do the hood seam. And right now for construction, I'm gonna use a 2.8 length stitch. I think that's probably good. Again, I can't really press this very well. So instead I'm gonna use the bias tape to kind of help flatten out my seam and just make a nice, nice interior finish. You can see like how cardboardy this is. <laughs> so now I am just going to take take my bias tape and sew it to to one side at one side of the seam. And again with just a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to wrap it back on itself so that it's totally covering that seam. It's probably a little bit difficult to see this since it's since this is matching tape. Normally I like I like lining hoods, but since this is quilted, the, the, the lining is kind of built in. So I have to finish the hood a little bit different. And you could put this through your surgery, but I would not suggest it. It's just too much bulk for your shirt here. Okay, I'm just gonna trim off the edge. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap that tape towards that. And this way, it's, it's actually probably better to turn your hood kind of inside out and work kind of inside the tube here. So this is going to be really tricky, if, especially if you've used um, glue <laughs> to, to baste everything like I did. It's just going to be really, really cardboardy. So it's just going to be kind of slow work and it's probably going to be really hard to see. I don't know if I can, I probably can't show this very, very easily. Um, so I'm pretty much just going to sew inside the hood and I'm, and again, I'm just wrapping my, I'm wrapping my tape over that seam so it's totally encased in there and I'm just going to top stitch close to the edge of the tape. 
and I am just going to go really slowly so I make sure that I am not kind of grabbing any kind of weird things and so that everything's laying flat. And at one point this is going to be really, really awkward and just keep persevering, you will get to the end of this seam. This is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. And this is if you have a hood on your under vest. You might not even have one on your pattern, but if you do, hey, boom, there you go. This is how you do it. And watch out for your fingers too. <laughs> because they like to get in the way too. There's no way to pin this. You just have to go for it. And in some places you may end up only being able to really see about an inch at a time. And that's okay. And you know what, if it's getting too bulky, go ahead and sew from the other side of the seam, which I think is what I'm gonna do here. Because it's getting really, really bunchy as I approach the crown. So I am gonna just cut this off and start from the other side. You can see, like even though I've I've only gotten that far, like it's really it's 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 a really nice look on that inside. Okay, so going from the other side. Try and line everything up as best you can. And this is the part that's probably gonna be really hard to see. So I'm just finishing up adding my binding to my hood. Uh, this is because because we're working with with a quilted fabric, I, I'm not lining the hood like I would normally do. I usually, you know, turn sew my hood and my hood lining together and then and then sew them and leave a hole so I can turn it um, so it and I have a, like a nice clean finish but in this case we've got to bind the edge a little bit differently because we're treating the hood as all one layer so I'm I'm putting bias binding on on the edge of the hood so I sewed it to I made a little clip where where it's this is going to this is my center front on uh, where it's going to meet on the on the vest and I sewed my binding to the wrong side of the hood and then I'm just finishing that up and then I'm gonna flip it and top stitch it all the way along this way. I like applying it to the wrong side of the hood as opposed to the, the, the right side and then flipping it to the inside because uh, we're just gonna, we're not gonna have to worry about how it looks on the inside as much because it's just, um, yeah, it'll just be a nicer finish. But anyway, let me just finish this little bit up here. I'm just coming around the edge with my with my stitching. And I'm sewing with, with a quarter inch seam allowance here. And actually when I round the corner, I'm actually gonna maybe keep it a little bit tighter than, than that quarter inch. We're probably going to have to trim the edges a little bit on, on the corner just so that um, the, we can flip that we can flip everything really nicely. Okay, and as I get to the end, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn back the raw edge of the bias binding to the inside so that it matches with where my, my clip is for, for my, my neckline. <laughs> Make sure that my binding goes right to the edge of that clip. Okay, so that's the end of my binding and now I'm just going to flip everything to the inside. And I'm gonna stitch around that way. Actually, start from this side because it'll be a little bit easier. You can see like that. I, it's a little bit funny, so I am just gonna trim it 
probably close to close, close to an eighth of an inch away from my, my stitching line. And that is just gonna make sure that, that the binding is gonna turn around that corner really, really nice and easily. It's not always the easiest to turn binding to the right side. We're gonna try and fold back, fold back that seam line and start stitching on that because it's gonna, it'll, it'll give us the nicest look. All right. Okay, I'm sewing with a 2.6 length straight stitch. That's a really nice length for this. And I am just gonna fold back everything and just so close to the edge of the of my my binding as I'm going around the whole thing. I know some people like to use those those wonder clips and if that is something that, that you feel comfortable using, you go for it. I'm just gonna use my fingers and just roll things back over on themselves and I am totally comfortable doing that. But if you are a pinner or a wonder clipper, you go for it. I think we all have things that we like to do that make us comfortable and I do stuff is not going to be the same as how somebody else does stuff. I'm personally, I don't, I don't like using pins or clippies because I think they, they, they slow me down a lot. And especially pins because I hurt myself. <laughs> right here at the, at, the, at the crown. I don't know if you have this on your machine, but my Janome has like this little black button. Uh, and I, I can lift, I can lift my presser foot and press it. It's, it's like this little black button on the side of it, on the side of my presser foot. I can press it when the presser foot is up and then put my presser foot back down and then my my foot goes straight, which is really, really helpful when you're going over a lot of bulk, like if you're making jeans or like right now, where it's trying to go over that place where we previously put the bias binding and all of the layers of the crown too at the same time. But I am, yeah. I like, I like that about about Shinomi. I don't know if, are there other companies that make, that have that kind of feature on their, on their regular straight stitch foot? I don't know. I would love to know about it. I'm sure that, I'm sure that's not, I'm sure that's not a, you know, something that, that only Janome's come up with. Because it's a really cool feature. Close to the end here. I'm gonna do my best to make this nice and smooth around the corner. It's always a little bit tricky with bias binding. Looks like we did pretty good today, so that's kind of cool. I'm just going to stitch down. Okay. So now you can see we've got we've got the, the trim all, all on the all over the the hood, and now it's ready to go onto the vest. 
So I've got my vest all ready to go. You can see I've already done one of the armholes. We'll do that one in a little bit. I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna sew on the, the hood first. Actually, I'm gonna sew in one of my labels first. Ugh. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. I'd love to have, love to see what kind of quilted garments you come up with. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing. For, for your hooded, your, so yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends.